Last Epoch is an ARPG with a newly added multiplayer mode that initially came to Steam Early Access back in 2019. This game has five base classes in the form of Sentinel, Mage, Rogue, Primalist and Acolyte, each of which have three additional mastery classes that you can spec into as you progress. In terms of theme, Last Epoch combines high fantasy with time travel, and throughout the main story you'll travel to various different ages, taking on bosses, creating your own unique build with hundreds of skill tree choices, as well as hunting for legendary gear. I previously covered Last Epoch in April 2021, but with the game getting closer to its 1.0 release, and me recently playing Diablo 4, I decided to check in on the game for its multiplayer update, get to level 50, and see if the game can hook me in. But first, sponsor. Everyone needs a VPN, so what better choice than the number one rated VPN software out there, ExpressVPN. ExpressVPN will basically give you the keys to fully unlock the potential of your internet browsing. Take Netflix for example. If you're a Netflix subscriber, you're limited to only view content available in your region. But there's hundreds of shows, movies and series available in other locations that are hidden from you. This is like going to McDonald's but only being able to order from the breakfast menu. Thankfully though, ExpressVPN allows you to change your location instantly with just a few clicks, so you're able to actually get the most out of your Netflix subscription. Here for example, I'm using ExpressVPN to change my location from the USA to the UK so I can watch 2012. In the past, I've also used ExpressVPN to change my location to Korea, China and Japan to participate in beta tests for Eastern MMORPGs. And on a daily basis, I'm connected to ExpressVPN on public Wi-Fi networks to avoid having my personal details, such as credit card numbers and passwords, stolen by sketchy coffee shop hackers. Yes, they do exist. Click my link in the description below or go to expressvpn.com slash thelazypeon to find out how you can get three months of ExpressVPN for free now. Last Epoch, time travel ARPG. The last time I played this game was about two years ago and I remember really enjoying it. And the game's just released a massive update like yesterday which has added multiplayer to the game. So let's check it out. 7,619 people in queue. I wasn't expecting that. Let's check out the Steam charts. There's only 18,000 people trying to play. Lads, open up some more servers. What are you doing? Here's me thinking I'm going to have a nice chill first impressions recording session tonight. The devs not anticipate that their game would be popular. I can see it now. Fires in the server room. People at the dev studio running around panicking. Let's check out the recent reviews. You can't give a game a negative review because of the queues upon a big update launch. It's a bit harsh. It seems like you've got separate offline characters and online characters, so I'll be returning to this game in a few days when it's less crazy. So it's a few days later after my initial attempts to play the game online. Let's see if there's no queues now. Hopefully everyone's gone to play the Diablo 4 beta, which I've just finished playing. Five different classes. You've got the Sentinel, the Rogue, the Mage, the Primalist, and the Acolyte. Each of these have their own different subclasses. So the Sentinel has Void Knight, Forge Guard, or Paladin. The Rogue has Blade Dancer, Marksman, or Falconeer. The Mage has Sorcerer, Spellblade, or Rune Master. The Primalist has Beast Master, Shaman, or Druid. And the Acolyte has Necromancer, Lich, or Warlock. Previously, when I played Last Epoch, I was a mage, and I really enjoyed it. But perhaps for the sake of this video, I should try out some melee. Fuck you guys for being a mage again. Big damage. Let's go. Two different game modes, standard or hardcore. If your character dies on hardcore, it's no longer hardcore. I'm probably going to die at some point, so we'll just go with standard. Let's not disappoint ourselves. I want to go for a chain lightning build, similar to what I've recently gone with in Diablo 4. Okay, so sometimes you attack the bear and your attacks just go through it. Look at that. Fireball anyway, it's a bit scuffed. Level up our lightning ability. And mage with a shield, okay. It's a bit different. Don't see that too often. Zap, zap, zap. Freeze. AoE. Yeah, mage still feels pretty good in this game. Big upgrade with the staff. Take the shard and go through the time rift. Level 5, another new ability. My health is zipping down pretty quickly. Chugging those health pots. Oh, almost dead. I feel so squishy. Fucking hell, like one monster attacks me. I'm getting murked. Level 7. Now our inventory's full. Oh no, I remember one of the things that annoyed me about the game last time. Inventory. Two minutes into the game and we're already doing this. Well, this game has one thing that Diablo 4 doesn't have. A map overlay where you can look at the map and move at the same time. Oh yeah, I love that ice attack. I forgot about that one. I can spam this twice, right? W. 
Yeah, there's no cooldown on that. It just costs a lot of mana. So if I go for like heavy mana efficiency, I can just spam my abilities. So they don't seem to have much of a cooldown in this game. Big damage, level 8. Combat very quickly gets better in this game once you start to unlock some cool abilities. Doesn't take long. I've got all of these affixes and the game hasn't really taught me how to put it on items. And now I've got this in my crafting bag. Okay, I guess it's going to teach me this mechanic later on. It's a little bit odd that it? it's not teaching me now. Ooh, legendary amulet. 100% crit chance if you have not dealt a crit recently. 50% less crit chance if you have dealt a crit recently. The item's called Gambler's Fallacy. 12% health gain on crit. Okay, yeah, it's obviously an upgrade, but it's quite a funny legendary. I like that. Let's see if we've got a loot filter, shall we? Loot filter? Yes, we do. No. Bullshit. Add rule. Add condition. This is uh, quite complicated. Hide all normal and magic items. Done. Easy. Big damage. Yeah, now we're starting to zap zap. It really doesn't take long at all for the combat in this game to just become really fun. It doesn't insult your intelligence and have you using like two or three abilities for two hours. It very quickly levels you up and allows you to dive into the talent trees and start to create your own build. I do appreciate that about this game. Level 12, zap zap zap, and big boss pops out and it's dead. Crafting. Ah, okay. So this is where the game's finally teaching me about crafting. Oh, I only have two things that can be applied. Oh, then we can actually upgrade the affix too. Did a little bit of upgrading. Let's continue. Ooh, some legendary boots. Are they good? Please be good. I'm currently wearing grey boots, so anything's an upgrade. Oh, another legendary. Game's just dropping legendaries on me. Is this one any good? Increase movement speed if you've hit an enemy in the last five seconds. I'll equip it because it's legendary and it looks cool. Maybe I can craft some stats for it, which makes it useful. Dodge through that. Freeze him? Yes. I like that you can freeze bosses in this game. Oh, got some blue items here. Idle. Shock. Chance to shock on hit lightning damage. Yeah, that's good. What do I do with this? Here? My lightning ability is starting to get very strong. It's about to get even stronger. I don't like the spells where it says, this spell can do X, Y, and Z, and then there's a but. There has to be a but, and then it like, the but is always the bad thing. I'm just choosing the abilities that don't have the but. I only want pros, I don't want cons. It must feel good to be an ARPG player right now. You've got so many good games to choose from. Path of Exile, Path of Exile 2 coming out, Diablo 4's not far away from full release. Last Epoch's just opened its multiplayer beta. I mean, Lost Ark is still pretty fun. So many good top-down games. As an MMORPG player, I kind of envy ARPG players because their genre's in a pretty decent state at the moment, it seems. If only the state of MMOs could be so strong. I don't think mobs de-aggro you in this game, if I remember correctly. I think they just chase you throughout the whole zone, which is pretty fun. 90%? Spell crit chance, that's mad. The modifiers on some of these weapons is crazy. Oh my god, almost dying. The mobs here are significantly stronger for some reason. Or maybe I need to build something a little bit more defensive because so far I'm full glass cannon. Well, I've yet to die so far, which is surprising. But with how the difficulty of these mobs is increasing, I think I'll be dying very soon. Oh, the idols go here. I'm completely blind, aren't I? How have I not seen that? Bro, there's this big thing here that says idols and I've just been carrying idols around in my inventory. 19. Oi! First death. I teleported out of that poison as well, but I was just not fast enough. So if I was playing a hardcore character, that's where my journey would end. What a sad way to die. I just kind of turned my brain off. I wasn't expecting a random pool of poison to kill me. Level 20. Another skill specialization slot. Two more idle slots. Nice. Sense of progression in this game so far has been fantastic. Ooh, a new legendary armor's just dropped. Please be good. Less elemental damage taken, increased elemental damage, increased crit, and leech. Okay, that's absolutely perfect for me. Massive upgrade. Now, as you can see from all of the shit on the floor, I've had to sort out some items. <laughs> I think it's time I... Uh, Fix my loot filter to be a little bit more picky. God, there's so many stats in this game. I love the chain lightning ability in this game. It's really fun. Chain lightning in pretty much every ARPG is always a good choice. Who doesn't love to zap motherfuckers? And now we've reached the end of time. And if I remember correctly, this is where I wrapped up my previous first impressions video of the game the last time I played it. 
But I'm gonna be playing quite a bit further for this video. Okay, so now I get to choose my mastery. Sorcerer, Spellblade, or Rune Master. It's obviously gotta be Sorcerer, hasn't it? Choosing a mastery is final and cannot be undone. Yeah, pretty sure. My first, a green item. I've never had a green drop before. Okay, what does this have on it? This is part of a set piece. Increased cast speed, massive armor, necrotic damage. Ooh, legendary amulet, please be good. I always get excited when legendaries drop in this game. The audiovisual feedback from rare drops is quite nice, quite satisfying. This one's gonna be really good. Plus two spell lightning damage, lightning resistance. You create small lightning explosions when you are stunned. I mean, I'm a lightning mage, so <laughs> seems pretty good. Absolutely loving the sense of progression in this game so far. Every level, every stat increase just feels really impactful. And you can just feel that with every level, your character's becoming more and more fun to play. An issue I had with Diablo 4 when I played it recently was that my character felt like he was getting weaker relative to the monsters I was fighting. Whereas in this game, I haven't really felt that to be the case. I'm just having such a chill time playing this game. I don't know if it's like the build that I'm playing that's just really fun. Just going through the level zapping things. I'm just having a great time. I'm just relaxing, enjoying myself. Not really bored or anything. I'm like engaged. I'm just in this lovely flow state with the game at the moment where I'm just having pure fun, but it's really relaxing as well. I've got this talent which increases my cast speed the more I cast a spell up to like 20 stacks. So now I can zap really quickly. It's starting to get super fun. Zap, zap, zap. And it costs hardly any mana too. I'm having so much fun reading and choosing my build for this game, more so than most ARPGs. There's just so many interesting choices. Okay, we've made it to where we need to be. And a boss fight, Admiral Harton. Some scuffed voice acting on that guy. <laughs> Whatever you say, Admiral. He's trying to use lightning against me. How very dare he. And he's dead. 35, another skill specialization slot. Okay, I didn't choose that. I just clicked on it because I wanted to see what I can spend the points in. Don't lock me in. Respect skill. Minimum skill level 5. Despecialized skill will remove all skill points and experience from the skill. Despecialize that. Yeah, I think we specialize in teleport. I can't see myself getting rid of that. Shorter cooldown. And if you have haste when you teleport, its duration is reset. The talent trees in this game are so interesting. Making your own build in this game is so fun. I haven't had a legendary for a long time. I think I'm due one. Right, this thing's taking no damage. Blocks if not emerged. What do you mean emerged? I'm trying to understand what that's actually trying to communicate. Okay, emerge. Oh, I see when he opens his mouth to attack. Yeah, weird boss. Big damage. Zap. And he's dead. Sit. Ooh. Legendary relic and a legendary amulet. And a green wand. We're about to get strong. No! This legendary item is like sick for fire mages, but I don't think I can use it. 18% increased cast speed though. I think it's actually still an upgrade, even though it's got one useful thing on it. What about the wand? Minion damage. What about the amulet? Minion crit. Why is this game giving me so much fucking necromancer gear? Minion, minion, minion. Every time I see one of these anywhere, I have a meltdown. Oh, well this is a beautiful area. Everywhere in the game looks more beautiful in the ancient times, before anyone existed. Is this game saying that we should just delete humans? This looks like a boss fight room if I've ever seen one. A pretty big boss fight room as well. Oh, voice acting as well. Big damage. I just realized that these are the two bosses that I've fought before. They're just reused and I had to fight them together this time. Not too difficult as a mage though. Now this is the one that you can only attack when he opens his mouth. And GG. 42. Ooh, what's this? It's a friend. It's a goat monster. Oh, wait, never mind. It's not a goat. It's a reindeer. Same thing. But I've been playing this game all night and the time's just been absolutely flying by. Definitely the sign of a good ARPG when it just puts you in that grinding trance. Ooh, we've unlocked a dungeon. Each attempt in a dungeon requires a key. Dying or leaving through the portal fails an attempt. Wait, it requires a key. There's one thing I don't have. A key. Okay, well, at least we've learned something. Nice, another passive point, another two idle slots. Very important to do the side quests in this game. Because if you skip the side quest, you're missing out on a lot of points. The Tomb of Moridus. Ooh, this looks like a big boss. Let's see if it's difficult. <laughs> Wait, what killed me? Do that again. Feels a bit weird that you, when you fight a boss and you die to it, you can just like run up to it without its health resetting. I feel like the boss's health should have reset there. It should have like punished me for being stupid. I'm not even damaging me now. Say that and I'm almost dead again. I just 
Don't talk when you're playing games, Craig. GG. Oh, where are we going now? Lake Leath. Judging by this loading screen, it's going to be quite a beautiful area. What level am I? 47. Two and a half levels till level 50. It's so weird that even as you're approaching endgame, you get, like, gear that requires level 4 to equip. To make the gear useful, you need to invest into the forging potential and, like, craft it. But it still feels a bit weird, like, level 48, still getting gear that drop requires level 4 to equip. I, I don't know, it just feels wrong. 49. One more until we're 50. Oh, wait. Was that level 50? Bro, I was uh, engaging in some second monitor content and I missed the biggest level. How have I done that? Oh my god, I'm almost dying as well. Ugh. So now I'm level 50. I can specialize in a final skill and I already know what I want to go for. Flame Ward. My character's an absolute beast now. So I thought level 50 was the max level, but no, you do just keep going. I don't know when the end game is. I don't know what level that comes into play. I guess once you've finished the main story, which I'm surely soon finished with. Oh my god, there's so much mobs density here. This is getting crazy. I love this game. I can't remember the last time an ARPG just absolutely mesmerized me like this. I just feel like the way you build your character with the talent tree and skill customization as well as the crazy multipliers on all of the items. It just makes you want to keep playing to make your character more and more OP and more crazy. It's something really addictive about it. It's like one more level, one more level. And usually with ARPGs, it's not really my genre, but there's something about this game that's really pulling me in. Maybe I'm turning into an ARPG fan. Whatever it is, the game's clearly doing a fantastic job. Fucking hell, it's, it's 3 a.m. I've been playing all day. You know what, the multiplayer stuff doesn't even matter because I've just had such a fantastic time playing this game, just single player going through the campaign leveling up my character and like doing all of the builds so apparently the game does have multiplayer and you can just like queue up with people and do this campaign stuff from level one but i've just had a great time playing on my own honestly i think the game just stands up really well at this point i feel like this video is dragged on for long enough i feel sorry for my editor because he's got like six to eight hours of footage where i'm mostly just sitting there saying nothing to go through so good luck to him so let's wrap it up there so after revisiting last epoch in 2023 my thoughts are as follows. The gameplay feels smooth, responsive and impactful. The power fantasy becomes really compelling with mob density increasing as you progress. Visually, the game looks quite good, not amazing but not terrible. The UI, voice acting and sound effects are all good. And the sense of progression you get from playing this game is incredibly addictive. It's like a more accessible version of PoE and every level up feels massively impactful with huge damage multipliers from items and talents. The game has a rather robust loot filter, re-rolling your talents and skills takes hardly any time to catch up in level, and you can also invite a friend to play together in multiplayer now if you choose. I feel like the game did a poor job of explaining the forging potential and gear upgrading system. If you're looking for a highly story-driven cinematic experience similar to Diablo 4, Last Epoch doesn't really have much of this, and due to the sheer amount of stats, damage types and attributes, actually getting an item that you want for your build is extremely rare. Then you've got a lot of RNG on top of that to not use too much forging potential when upgrading that gear. Overall, I'm writing this pros and cons list about a week after I stopped recording Last Epoch, but I continued to play the game in my spare time off camera. I fucking love this game. The power fantasy and core gameplay, along with how approachable creating your own build is, feels amazing. Last Epoch didn't overwhelm me with builds like PoE. I went into this game and made my own fun build that carried me through the game fairly well so far, and that feels great. For me, this is one of my favourite ARPGs out right now, and I love how it put me in this chill flow state of grinding, levelling up and losing track of time whilst listening to music. Seems like an easy game to recommend that will only get better upon full release and additional updates. But that's it for this video guys, as always let me know your thoughts on Last Epoch in the comments below, how do you think this ARPG compares to Diablo 4 and PoE? Help us out with a like for the algorithm gods, social media on screen, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.